All right, so just wanted to go through. So thank you um, for those who joined our e-commerce info session today. Um, so my name is Sue Lee. I'm the marketing coordinator for continuing education at the University of Windsor. Uh, our e-commerce courses provides learners with an enhanced understanding of how to conduct business online and covers um, the key topics and strategies that are required to succeed in the digital economy. So before we begin, there's uh, some housekeeping items I'd like to go through. Uh, the session will be recorded, as I said, um, so your cameras and mics are turned off throughout the duration of the presentation. Um, so if you have a question, please just type it into the chat and we can address them uh, during the Q&A at the end. In terms of the agenda, um, what we'll do is we'll just jump right into going through each of the three e-commerce courses, starting with digital marketing. Uh, followed by website tools for online sales, and finally, e-commerce business strategy. Uh, I'll dive into some more program details before the Q&A, and we'll have, uh, we have all three instructors here with us today, uh, Adiela Avram, um, Navneet Chadger, and Stephen Javor, and we'll get to know them a little bit more in the presentation. Uh, let me just double check if Adiela is here. Uh, I think she was having some technical difficulties. So Navneet, did we want us? Did you want to go through your uh, portion first, as we wait um, for Adiela? So uh, we can. I can introduce Av Navneet um, first here, and you could still see my screen here. Um, so. Our speaker, first speaker, Navneet Chadger, uh, who will be teaching a website tools for online sales. Navneet's extensive experience includes senior roles at internet first companies like Meta, formerly Facebook, Loblaw Digital, and Salesforce. He is an accomplished marketing executive, currently leading Toronto operations for Labellium as managing director. Uh, Labellium is a digital performance agency specializing in e-commerce and media strategy. He has helped hundreds of organizations adapt to the digital ecosystem and realize maximum returns for their their investments in this space. So Navneet, I read that you uh, are in the process of completing your MBA. So uh, very pre-congratulations on that. Um, if you want to add anything, uh, I may have missed your work experience. Just let us into your world a little bit um, and take us through the uh, website tools for online sales course. Uh, of course. Uh, so, I mean, thank you for that thorough detailed uh, resume rundown. Uh, I've been in digital digital ecosystems and digital in digital marketing, as well as digital development for the entirety of my career. So 17, 18 years now and counting, started off as a developer, graduated from Windsor uh, in from computer science and was a developer for six, seven years before moving on to the business side of things. And the one thing that uh, this whole experience has taught me has really been around how do you make the technical pieces work well with the business side of things, when, especially when it comes to running a business. And in today's day and age, running a business is almost, um, you know, almost 100% of the time related to being able to transact online. Uh, if you could go to the next slide there, Sue. Yep. So this course, I taught this course last year, it used to be called the Web, e web Management for E-Commerce. Uh, what we found that uh, to, during the course of this, uh, during the course, that people were more interested in what are some of the specific tools that will accelerate e-commerce. We, the focus on this course is really around how do you design a, a website that works better than anything else, right? Building a website in today's day and age is actually very simple in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, there's pre-built templates, you just plug and play and you're good to go. But the really successful e-commerce websites and the really successful e-commerce channels even, because it's not more than just a website nowadays, require a certain amount of depth of thought and uh, focus in how things are designed. The whole exercise is really cons called CRO, which is called conversion rate optimization. There's a lot of, that's happening in this space, and we're going to talk a little bit more around how we do CRO 
uh, on our website, conversion rate optimizations on our website, as well as what are some of the basic principles or the key principles to design a website that maximizes revenue um, in an e-commerce space. Each session will be a mix of lectures. So we'll do lectures, there's case studies, there'll be hands-on learning activities. One of the key things that we'll output from this session is a fully functional e-commerce website that will build from scratch over the course of uh, these six sessions. I hope you find that exciting, because I do. <laughs> So we kind of walk through the learning outcomes briefly, but you know we're going to look at the various channels that are available for online sales. It's you know it's not just a website. You can transact on Amazon. You can transact on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok's probably going to be coming soon. All of these different channels are now available for online sales, including voice commerce. Like you can, um, there are chat platforms that allow you to transact directly on there as well. So. We're going to review all of those. We're going to see what makes what things work better than others, but then we're going to delve deeper into the website infrastructure because that kind of becomes the backbone of how you transact online. Even the e-commerce channels that are external rely on your website for a lot of those things, including things like your product sets and transaction capabilities. We're going to focus on, we're going to look at UX design principles, that's user experience design principles, and how they impact customer journeys, why certain websites have better transactions than others. And it's easier and people go back to websites that they have a good experience with compared to similar websites that it or similar products that they don't necessarily have good experience with. We'll review some web development platforms. We'll experience building the website itself, which as I mentioned earlier. And towards the end of the course, we're gonna delve a little bit into some development, very, very high level, but that will allow you to sort of debug and make small edits uh, using tools like HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript. Last but not least, we are, um, you know, the platforms, the, the environment, the space overall is evolving. So IoT, Internet of Things, chatbots, virtual assistants, they're here now, but how do they factor into how your website operates? And by the time we come to this course, which is in August and September, who knows? There might be other things that'll that'll come to the forefront, and we're going to spend some time reviewing all of those as well. So it's a it's a heavy agenda. Yes, um, we're going to touch on a lot of things, but it is definitely going to be something that's going to set you up very well. Should e-commerce be a core part of your career or your job? Thank you. Thank you, Nev. Uh, I'm going to um, test out. Uh, it looks like Adela is in, so I'm going to allow her camera and mic, and let's see. Hi, Adela. And if you have you questions, me? we'll talk after. Yes, for sure. Definitely. Uh, thanks, Nev. That was awesome. Thank you. Um, we have you back. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. That, <laughs> no was, uh, that was intense. That was intense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, let me please uh, give you a little introduction, give uh, our attendees a little introduction. So here we go. So we have Adia Labrim. Um, so uh, she she will be teaching uh, digital marketing. Adiela specializes in, in comprehensive digital marketing strategy and execution with a deep expertise in paid advertising, search engine optimization, search engine marketing, e-commerce strategy, programmatic media, paid social, display and online video. She is an award-winning digital marketer and a senior manager in uh, Deloitte Digital's advertising, marketing, and e-commerce offering. Prior to joining Deloitte, she has held uh, senior digital marketing roles at a uh, leading Google Analytics consultancy, as well as global marketing agencies with clients spanning several industries, including retail, consumer education, travel, and public sector. Adela, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Uh, can you speak a little bit more about your background, uh, your experiences? You know, What are the benefits to digital marketing in an organization and what you'll be covering in the course? Absolutely. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Uh, I taught this class last year, and I'm excited to teach it again. So my background, as you mentioned, has been in digital marketing pretty much my whole career. 
um, I started off on the agency side. So I was doing the marketing planning and all the execution of the marketing for, for highly enterprise, large scale companies. And so in the course, we'll be thinking through and talking about how do you actually create a digital marketing strategy? And then we'll be turning that into a plan using the different components of digital marketing. So we'll think through all the components. We'll think through search and we'll think through display. We'll think through content marketing, email marketing. We'll also be talking about marketing analytics. So once you've done the plan, once you've executed the plan for your marketing, how do you actually measure if it's been successful and if it's you know driving all the outcomes? And then we'll talk on marketing technology as well, because we're now at a point as marketers where we can't um, separate the strategy from the technology. So we'll talk about the different tools and technologies that we'll be using to plan and execute the strategies. So the class is for people who are interested in marketing. It's for people who are already marketers. It's for people who want to get into marketing and just have a deeper understanding of how to plan, how to execute, how to measure, how to keep up with the trends in technology and things like that. Great, thank you, Adiela. Um, uh, that was great. And we know that we you have extensive um, just experience and overall. And I think one of the things just as myself as a marketer um, would be interested in knowing is really just uh, how to track all of it and, and reporting. I mean, you know, we dive into a little bit of that, you know, on my end already, but just having a good refresher and a good uh, understanding of that would be great. So I think um, very valuable courses here. Um, so our next speaker is uh, Stephen Javor. Stephen will be teaching uh, e-commerce business strategy. Uh, Stephen, is your camera working? Oh, there you go. Okay, so I see you. Here, uh, Stephen is an accomplished leader in e-commerce and is a pioneer of digital consumer, uh, customer experience and e-marketing strategies. Stephen has worked uh, with companies such as Amazon, Walmart, Canada Post, Rogers, Bell, RBC, CTP, Home Depot, and has led two startups in the online retail and digital services verticals. Currently, he is a global director of e-commerce uh, for Paris Based Energy Solutions Multinational and has uh, leadership, uh, leadership uh, positions in Canada, the US and the EU. Stephen is also an active member of the Academy of Television of Arts and Science, the Emmy Awards. So that's really interesting. Uh, <laughs> Stephen, it's so nice to have you here today. Thank you. Um, anything you'd like to add uh, to your background and experience? And if you can walk us through e-commerce business strategy. Sure. Sure, no. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Great. We hear yeah. you. Yeah, I'm, I'm the old guy on, on the team here. So I've been involved in, in digital since really the beginning of, of the web. I built my first website in 1995 for a company that you may know, Rogers.com. So I helped build Rogers' first website. Uh, and then in 1998, I built my first e-commerce site uh, way back when, which was you know a total failure because no one thought putting their credit cards online was a, was a great idea back in 1998. You know, but boy, have times changed, especially over the last few years where everyone was sort of, you know, if they weren't in e-commerce, the pandemic did tend to, to push them towards e-commerce. And what we've learned uh, in the interim of the past 20 years uh, of e-commerce is that really the customer is loyal to the experience, right? And so when you're thinking about e-commerce, you really have to start thinking now about omni-channel because it's not a complete linear route. You may start your journey online or maybe you started offline and then you continued online. It may be through your uh, your mobile device or your desktop device or your tablet. You may be in a store and looking up something and decide that maybe I'll look up the reviews of this. So all of these factors sort of come together. And what we like to say is that you really don't need a digital strategy. You need a business strategy for a digital world. And what this um, course will, will will help teach you, and you can go to the, the next slide, um, is basically understanding how to put together a business strategy for a digital world. 
of which e-commerce is a large part of that. And so we'll go through and understand all the different types of e-commerce that you can have. You can be doing a merchant, you know, e-commerce site, which is you sort of selling, you know, directly, or maybe you're part of a marketplace or selling on a marketplace like Amazon or Alibaba or eBay or any of the various marketplaces out there. Perhaps a subscription model is good for you. How do you incorporate if you have a store, you know, how do you place that that digital capability, uh, you know, into your everyday, you know, omni channel world? You know, these are sort of the things that we'll go through. What we like to talk about from an e-commerce standpoint is that, you know, you may be sort of deep in one area of your knowledge. Maybe you're deep in marketing, maybe you're deep in sales, maybe you're deep in the technology side. But really to succeed in e-commerce, you have to understand how all of these pieces fit together. The experience doesn't end actually when you do your order online. It actually ends, you know, after you actually receive the product. You know, does did everything arrive the way you expected it to arrive? Did you get notifications about it? Are you able to provide support afterwards? online, offline, via online chat, via calls. So all of this sort of works together in the new reality that we're calling the post-pandemic omni-channel world. And what we'll do during the course is we'll go through, you know, uh, a series of stages so that you can properly plan and understand how to put a strategy together, a business strategy, which incorporates e-commerce so that you're more successful uh, by the time you know you actually go to uh, to to execute your your plan, um, so really happy to be a part of this team. We've got a great uh, number of instructors here at the University of Windsor, and all of these pieces fit together. You can understand the strategy piece, for, you know, coming from me. Then you can understand the digital marketing piece, and then you can all understand how to you know optimize and and make sure that you're converting, no matter which way they order. Uh, and there's also a big difference between, you know, the B, the business to consumer or B2C e-commerce omni-channel strategy and the B2B business to business omni-channel uh, omni strategy. And we'll discover how those are the same and how they're different, how the B2C model, the everyday model uh, that we have in our everyday lives is, you know, influencing the B2B model, which is actually three times bigger than, than the B2C model. And all these terms will, will become more easier for you to understand. So, you know, looking forward to uh, tell, to teaching everybody. And uh, if there's any questions, I'm happy to, to stay along and, and answer them. Thanks, Stephen. That, that was great. Awesome. Um, so uh, just getting to know um, the three instructors, and now we have to go to the, uh, the technical stuff and talk about the courses themselves and the dates and the fees and everything. So, um, so before we start the Q&A, just wanted to provide uh, a few details about the program itself and the courses. So um, the courses themselves all start uh, or uh, take place on Thursdays, uh, 6 to 9 p.m. So just trying to make the evening classes as flexible as possible for um, you know, busy work schedules during the day. Um, we've got digital marketing. That is the first uh, course that starts, and it starts May 19th um, into the spring. And then website tools for online sales and e-commerce business strategy, both uh, starting uh, late summer and into the early fall. Um, basic prerequisites, uh, again, with continuing education courses, we want to just may be sure that uh, these courses are accessible for everyone. And so really these are recommended prerequisites um, for you to take the course. So just basic computer skills, uh, experience working with word processing, email, web browsing, English language profici proficiency, successful completion of uh, high school, uh, some business experience is recommended and uh, some knowledge of uh, statistics and uh, math, uh, grade 12 math is also recommended. Um, so in terms of the costs, uh, the full certificate, so I uh, just wanted to also be clear that each of the courses can be taken individually as well. So if uh, you're interested in one particular course, you're able to just take that. Um, each uh, individual course, if you take those, they will uh, come with a uh, certificate of completion with the course name uh, issued by the University of Windsor Continuing Education. Um, but if you do want to pursue the full certificate, that would be all three um, e-commerce courses, you will uh, receive the e-commerce certificate as well. 
So um, some of these courses, so like if you're taking these courses individually, each one is eligible for the OSAP micro-credential application. Uh, if you are uh, looking to uh, get some assistance on, uh, temporary assistance on fees, um, and also discounts for U Windsor alumni, staff and students uh, are also available. Just email continue at uwindsor.ca for the discount code. And any other questions that you can think of as well after this presentation, um, please just email us there. We're really responsive to that email. Uh, so uh, just email us at continue at uwindsor.ca and all program details can also be found at continue.uwindsor.ca as well. So with that said, we can now start the Q&A and as we wait for questions to come in, we can actually uh, we actually have a few questions of our own for our attendees today. Uh, we'll be putting up um, a couple of polls uh, which will appear in the chat, uh, just gauging your interest in each of the courses. And we're also curious to know when the best time and days would be to hold continuing educations in general. Um, just curious to know what your thoughts are on that based off of uh, your own preferences and schedules. Uh, the answers are anonymous as well. So just looking at the chat here. Uh, we've got some polls. Moniza, our lovely marketing co-op student, um, has put up the first one. Uh, Sarah says Tuesdays, Thursdays are great days. Great. Um, so I think one um, uh, common question that we get uh, from students is, what is, I guess, the time commitment outside of class for assignments and um, you know, readings and things like that. So uh, if if each of our speakers can uh, speak to their course, that would be great. Sure, uh, from from uh, the business strategy side, it's not too heavy. Uh, you know, we do have some uh, some quizzes that you need to do. Uh, we are expecting you to, you know, get some give some feedback on uh, on what we're what we're discussing every week and there is you know a, a couple of uh, small assignments that you need to you need to complete so you know I, I wouldn't say that you would need more than maybe perhaps you know an hour or maybe uh, hour and a half every week on top of uh, the class itself great Adiela yes let Thank me you, know Steve. if you let me know if you cannot see or hear me I'm going to assume you can we can. Um, for digital marketing, we have an assignment every week. It's not long. Uh, it's only because we want to make sure that you're putting into action what you're learning. So every week we're going to focus on one, top one topic. Let's say the week is focused on display. Uh, you're going to have to build your display component of your marketing plan. So you're actually working through the entire course, building your marketing plan such that by the end of the course, your plan is complete. So I would say an hour to one to two hours a week outside of class is sufficient to keep up with your assignments and make sure that you're understanding the concepts. Thank you. Now. Uh, and on the website tools uh, piece, yeah, about about an hour um, of time for readings, uh, prep for quizzes, etc. There's Two quizzes. There's some. There's readings. Couple of readings for each session. There is a assignment that, or an assignment that is delivered about two weeks after the course is done, and that's your sort of full blown website. So, and that's really more of a, you know, your own approach. So, depending on how deep you want to build or how valuable you want to make this website, if you want to continue using it for your sort of real world uh, uses then you can put a lot more time into it. We do carve out time during the session to do hands-on work. So there's time carved out and at least here are the sessions where you're doing hands-on work with supervision uh, or online supervision. But yeah, one hour per week, I would budget that about that during the course and maybe another three or four hours after the course to finish up the website, depending on your level of engagement and how much, how much work you want to put into it. 
Thank you. Uh, we have another question here. Uh, if I'm unable to attend one night, of course, due to work or commitment, is it possible to make up? Um, so uh, I believe with each of the courses, we do make every attempt to uh, record the sessions, but there is um, a an attendance policy or requirement to complete the course. I believe it's 75 percent uh, uh, attendance. Uh, however, I can circle back with you if you want to just send us a message or um, an email, Sarah, and I can let you know for sure. But there definitely um, is a little bit of flexibility there. And I guess another question we had uh, to very just um, in terms of just a general, like with any of, of our courses too, is uh, I guess employment opportunities that come with completing e-commerce. So um, again, I don't I don't know if uh, if our speakers can kind of speak to that, and I guess uh, just elaborating on you know how you kind of got into. I mean, you had a little bit of an introductory bio there, um, but uh, are there opportunities uh, for employment? Yeah, there are massive opportunities for employment if you have skills or interest in this. And not only uh, is there, you know, work, we're, we're under uh, this pressure, especially since uh, the pandemic has really elevated e-commerce into everyone's uh, mindset that almost every company you can think of is looking for someone with with experience or even with interest to help them uh, to get through the, uh, to, to help them complete some of the, you know, the things that they need to do with their, with their e-commerce sites. And there's lots of different ways of getting into, you know, having, you know, the the series of courses underneath your belt is going to help you get there. You're going to have some validity when you're coming to your interview and saying what you don't and what you don't know. Um, there's also the opportunity to start your own your own online business and really get hands on experience. And this is, I think, one thing that all three of the courses, you know, can help you do is, you know, the best thing you can do is just get out there and try it, you know, get, get your hands dirty, even if you're just sort of trying to sell something as an experiment because then you're going to get the real world learning that uh, that we teach you plus your own experience and then when you if you decide to go and try to apply for someone you'll have something to actually explain and talk about and it's it's the best way to learn all right great thank you Stephen. anyone else uh, want to sort of uh, speak to their uh, area in terms of like employment i mean like uh, nav i know you have a uh, computer science background, uh, but do you actually need, uh, I guess, like if you're looking at, you know, web development and things like that, if, um, you know, what, what are, I guess, like the required skills now that you need in terms of, I don't know, um, technological or even strategic? Oh, you're on mute. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. I will say the computer science uh, degree and sort of the the stuff we used to cover is very different in the 20 years since I or you know, 18 years since I graduated. It's become very different. What we used to spend hours coding now you can build in about 15 minutes flat using drag and drop and on the maps, right? So uh, in terms of what we're building, in terms of what we're um, what we're going to focus on for e-commerce. You don't necessarily need a computer science background. Yeah, I mean it helps because then you can you're better versed with the the machinations that drive everything that you're seeing on the front end or on the screen. But in order to execute, you um, you don't need that computer science background. What you do need is an eye for um, for a, a critical eye, really, uh, because we're going to focus on customer experience because. Customer experience, in my opinion, is become, becomes the, the key to driving a better e-commerce experience versus a poor e-commerce experience. And with that critical eye for customer experience, you will be able to incorporate those, uh, those insights into how you build your websites. And also like how you design your, you know, your marketing strategies, how you design your entire business flow as well. Like where do you reduce friction? You will. When we when we do this course, you'll hear me talk about friction a lot. We're just giving you a heads up. <laughs> so. Awesome. Okay, great. Thank you, uh, Adela. Um, we are just I don't I don't know um, 
how much <laughs> you got there, but uh, we we're just it. talking I about, yeah, it. you got it. You got it. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any comments on that employment opportunities? And I guess what is required for uh, someone to find a job in digital marketing or, you know, what other skills? Yeah. So for people who are starting their career and want to pivot from another field, um, there's a lot of entry level opportunities. So when I start, so as you may or may not know, I didn't study marketing at all. Um, I didn't study digital marketing or marketing at all, uh, but I am in the field today. So uh, for people who are just starting out, there are many, many entry level roles that this course will help give you an idea of what the real world is like. Um, that you can, and I can guide people through the course on like what are good companies to look for entry level roles at for digital marketing. And then for people who are more advanced in their careers who are looking to pivot, um, you can think about pivoting within your company or within a new company and using the adjacent skills that you have, regardless of what field that's in, using the knowledge that you've learned from the course to make a pivot into digital marketing. So you know, you got to do the leg legwork of like networking and, you know, meeting the right people. Um, but there are many, many opportunities, uh, as I'm sure you've all seen on LinkedIn, especially given that this is the time of the great resignation. So I, I would not say there's any sort of shortage of opportunities within digital marketing. That's great. And I'm, as I'm well, echo that because sorry, I was just going to say I'm, go I'm always looking for people on my team. Um, for like digital marketers are always always in demand, um, so yeah, all of all of these courses are really going to set you up. Sorry, go ahead, Stephen. Sorry, I, and I would add that you know there are many different places to get involved in e-commerce from a, a business side. You know, you may be involved in in the technology side of helping build new functionality. The customer experience side of you know understanding that the, the journey the customer can go and that's from omnichannel the business side is understanding the analytics uh the marketing side the logistics side you know the the support side so there's many different places where you can get involved in in e-commerce and build upon your knowledge uh and one of the things that the strategy course also does is that it helps you sort of build a a, a basically a business plan whether that's for your own business, uh, if you want to start one up, if you've got a great idea and you want to go through it and see, you know, how would I put a business plan together? We'll take you through that. Uh, or if you're in an existing business and you want to add e-commerce to it, or you have a great idea for your business that you'd like to put in front of your superior, you know, we'll help you build that sort of, you know, very high level business plan that at least can get the conversation starting started. So, you know, I think there's lots of different opportunities in e-commerce. You just have to sort of understand that you know, it, it's sort of part of regular business now is that you, every company needs to have some idea of what they're doing digitally and what their e-commerce plan is. So great time to uh, to get your feet wet. All right, really great insights there. Um, another question is, are there course materials for each course? If so, what is the approximate cost? So there is no additional cost uh, on top of the course fee. Uh, I'm not sure if there are additional readings um, that are supplied within the course, um, but uh, yeah, no additional cost. Uh, really any course material that is offered will be within like that course, that course fee. Um, anyone else have any questions? We have a little bit of time left. If not, if you can think of anything else after, again, email us, continue at uwindsor.ca, uh, and we are happy to um, get those answers for you. Thank you so much, everyone, and thank you to our speakers as well um, for taking the time. I know you guys have very busy schedules, so, oh, and uh, so I appreciate everyone, and um, yeah, give, give some of your time back as well. 25 minutes of your time back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Bye.